All right, so here's a circuit problem, and the first thing we're going to do is determine is this series or parallel. So you look at the circuit, and from the battery, it looks like the electricity must go through first this resistor, and then through this resistor, and then through this resistor before it gets back. So it's going with one after the other. This is a series circuit. So you start off, what you want to do is take your resistors. So we're going to call this, we'll call this resistor one. We'll call this resistor two. We'll call this resistor three. It doesn't really matter. So we've got R1, R2, and R3. And I'm also going to make a total. And then across, I get V, I, and R, voltage, current, resistance. So what I'll do is start filling in what I know. So I know my total voltage is 12 volts. I don't know anything about my current yet, but I do know the resistances of all of them. Resistor 1 is 30 ohms. Resistor 2 is 50 ohms. Resistor 3 is 20 ohms. And so far, that's all I know. Our goal is to fill in this entire chart. And what's nice is, as soon as you get two out of three of any line, you can solve using the equation V equals I times R. So, so far, I only have one on each row. So I can't use this equation yet. So I need to use what I know. This is a series circuit, and in a series circuit, the resistances add up. In other words, a 30 and a 50 and a 20, together that ends up being 100 ohms. So my total resistance then is 100 ohms. I can add these up. Now, all of a sudden, I have two out of three of one of these lines. I know the voltage, the total voltage, and the total resistance, which means I should be able to find the total current because V equals I times R. So 12 is going to equal I times 100. We don't know I, so we saw we're going to divide each side by 100. So I ends up being 0.12, and that's going to be amps. So my current is going to be 0.12 amps. So that means when this current leaves the battery, it's 0.12 amps. Now again, this is a series circuit. So 0.12 amps leaves, and 0.12 amps returns, because you always have to have the same amount of current returning. That is the exact same amount of current that passes through each resistor. 0.12 amps must go through here. 0.12 amps must go through here. 0.12 amps must go through here. We don't lose any current along the way. So now I can fill in 0.12 amps for all of the currents because it's series. And now what I have is I have two out of three on each of the other lines. I can now solve for the voltages because I've got two out of three for this, I've got two out of three for the second, I've got two out of three for the third. So at this point I will be equals I times R. So I'm just gonna plug in I times R, so 0.12 times 30. I get 3.6 volts for R1. 0.12 times 50, I get 6 volts for R2, and 0.12 times 20, I get 2.4 volts for R3. So there's a couple checks you can do. In series, two things must be in common. The voltages must add up, so all of these voltages must add up to the total, which in this case, if you add them up, it does, comes to 12. The resistances must always add up to the total. And the last thing is the currents must all be the same. So the currents are all the same. So that's for series, and that's a way to check when you're all done. Also, V must equal I times R for both individual resistors and for the total. And that's how we solve this. We've solved everything we need to know about this circuit. And that's it. So until next time, I am Derek Cordova. Have a delightful day.